Let's look at the energy balance for a tubular plug flow reactor. So we can do this most easily by taking a differential cross-sectional slice of our reactor. So if we do that, this will look something like this, where we have some differential slice with fluid coming into it, fluid leaving. We can have some heat exchange with the surroundings, so with the walls of the reactor. And we'll say that the outside of the reactor is at some temperature Tc. We'll give the uh, temperature of our fluid uh, just T. And we'll define the positions in the reactor. So at this position here, we'll call it Z, down the length of our uh, tubular reactor. And then leaving that differential slice, that will be Z plus delta Z. So in words, our energy balance is going to be the accumulation of enthalpy in our differential volume is equal to the enthalpy flow in by the fluid minus the flow of enthalpy out plus the heat generated by your reaction plus the heat added from the surroundings. So we can write this quantitatively, assuming our plug flow reactor is operating at steady state, such that there's no accumulation and all time derivatives are equal to zero. So doing that, we can write that the accumulation is equal to zero. And then our first terms will be uh, basically the enthalpy carried in by the fluid and the enthalpy leaving uh, by flow out. So we can write these terms as the volumetric flow rate times the heat capacity per unit volume, which is rho Cp, uh, times the temperature. And so we'll keep track of this of fluid leaving our differential element and coming into our differential element. The next term will describe the heat generated by reaction. So this will depend on the reaction rate, the enthalpy of reaction, and then the volume of this differential element, which will be equal to the cross-sectional area of our pipe, uh, times this length delta Z. So the last term will describe the heat transfer between the fluid in the reactor and the reactor walls. So this will depend on the heat transfer coefficient, the temperature difference, so this will be the temperature in the reactor minus the temperature of that uh, surrounding medium, and then the area available for heat transfer. So this will be the perimeter length of that tube times delta Z, so the distance along that differential element. So if we take the limit as delta Z goes to zero, so as our um, small element along the reactor length becomes infinitesimally small, our energy balance will now become a differential equation. So we can write this as the volumetric flow rate times the heat capacity per unit volume times the derivative of temperature with respect to position along the length of the reactor is equal to the cross-sectional area of our tube times minus delta H of reaction, if we have a single reaction, times the rate of that reaction, minus a term associated with heat transfer, so that'll depend on the heat transfer coefficient, times the perimeter length of the reactor, times the temperature difference between the fluid in the reactor and the surrounding medium. So we can recast this in a little bit more convenient way, so we can write the derivative of temperature with respect to reactor volume is equal to minus delta H of reaction times the reaction rate. So again, we can write this as a summation if we have multiple reactions going on. Then we can account for this heat transfer. This will be the heat transfer coefficient times the ratio of the perimeter length of the reactor divided by its cross-sectional area times the difference in temperature between 
fluid in the reactor and outside the reactor. And this will all be divided by the volumetric flow rate times the heat capacity per unit volume. So this is our energy balance for a steady state tubular reactor. This will be coupled to our mole balance. So if we have some species A, we can write the mole balance like this, where again, the reaction rate is gonna be a function of the molar flow rate of A and temperature. So we have these coupled differential equations that we can solve simultaneously to solve reactor design problems for non-isothermal tubular reactors.